This episode of Straight Shooter Wrestling Podcast is brought to you by Betwhackers. If you're looking to make some serious money during this year's college football and NFL season, then listen up. Betwhackers is for the betting public who are looking to get an edge on their weekly wagers on college and NFL football. The Betwhackers team will provide you with six weekly picks that their experts have identified to give you a winning edge across both college and NFL football, along with giving you one power slam parlay. With their countless hours of research, the Betwhackers experts have delivered their clients a 56% average win rate in the NFL season and a 63% average win rate in the college football season across the past five years. And if you know anything about gambling, you know that those numbers are absolutely crazy. Just in 2020, the Betwhackers experts delivered a 69% win rate to their clients in the college football season. At that point, that's pretty much a license to print money. And for those really wanting to go above and beyond, their power slam parlays have won at least three times every football season in the last five years, and that's gonna give you three to six times return on your weekly wager. Of course, you can always verify this because all of their win percentages are authenticated by Bet365. As an avid sports gambler myself, I promise you that I'm gonna be using their picks because why use my picks that usually deliver 10 to 15% win rates when I can lock in anywhere from 56 to 70%. Why not, right? And of course, they're providing Straight Shoot listeners with a fantastic promotion. For the first month, Straight Shoot subscribers get a discount of $75 on their membership when they use the promo code SLAM at checkout. Again, that's $75 off when you use the promo code SLAM. And that's creative because we're a wrestling podcast. Sign up by using the Straight Shoot link found on the Betwhackers website. That's www.betwhackers.com. Again, www.betwhackers.com. You will also find the direct link in the description of this video or audio podcast. Thank you very much to Betwhackers for sponsoring Straight Shooter Wrestling Podcast. And now on to the episode. Welcome everybody to Straight Shooter Wrestling Podcast. We are hot off the heels of Clash of the Castle. And once again, we've got Heel Kevin on the mic. How you doing, Kevin? Stop! Fancy! This is your show. This is your baby. This is your ship. I want to be respectful, but I would be remiss without stating that ladies and gentlemen... It has finally happened. I have ascended the ladder of greatness, <laughs> and I am now the only five-time, 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 five-time. Say the last one with me, Santi, the five-time. Five time. Special guest host of the Straight Shoot Podcast, Santi. I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. I had to throw that out there. What a weekend in wrestling, and an emotional roller coaster to say the least yeah no doubt we're gonna jump into that and if you're an audio listener or watching here on youtube you may have seen that the big at the very beginning of uh the recording that uh, we have a sponsor please 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 go support them all the links will be down in the description below um yeah that's all i can say i'm so happy to uh have brought on uh Betwhackers as a, a sponsor here to straight shoot all the details will of course have been at the very beginning of uh of the video and everything will be down in the description uh of this video and uh an all of of the audio feeds whether you're listening on apple podcast spotify or any podcast services around the globe uh before we jump in if you're watching on youtube make sure to leave this a like if you're enjoying our podcast make sure to subscribe uh if you're listening on audio services uh consider finding whatever method there is to leave a review i know on spotify you can leave five stars five stars five stars I, i'm not gonna go through the whole thing kevin already kind of uh beat that drum to death but just see where you're able to leave any sort of reviews it really helps us out tremendously but let's jump into some wrestling folks Folks, um, Clash at the Castle, Kevin. We're not going to go into a full detail match by match review, um, but uh, give me your one word review for it. What comes to mind when I say, Kevin, what did you think of Clash at the Castle? Give me two words, and I'm going to say active crowd. Mm. The crowd was on fire. The the show overall, amazing. Like, it, it was like we covered last it's 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 the first one under triple h is it going to live up to the hype i think it did but good lord santi that crowd from start to finish they were there they wanted you to know they were there and i feel like as an in-ring performer that's the kind of crowd you want because it just makes it feel so much better and i mean you even look at bailey who tried to be a heel throughout her entire match and every time they cheered her or sang her song she couldn't help but crack that smile. That crowd, I don't know what it was like in person. Maybe when Steve comes back, he can give us a uh, a more in-depth answer on that. But from the other side of the television, I mean, it, it, it sounded great. It looked great. And that crowd was ready for some wrestling. 
Yeah, it's these crowds that make me remember and especially appreciate the work that professional wrestlers across the globe, not just WWE, had to do uh, during the pandemic when they were doing this in front of no one. Because it, if you have no one to feed off of, right, sure, you can feed off of the energy uh, uh, off of your opponent, off of your tag team partner, but it's not the same. It's not the same as having 60,000 plus wild Europeans going crazy crazy singing songs in your name um going ballistic at returns um grimacing and wooing at every chop from gunther and mm. sheamus um this crowd really um made me appreciate what we lost during the pandemic and i'm glad that it's back uh and it's back in full force it's almost as if they haven't had wrestling there in like 30 years yeah almost you know the crowd is just a Piggyback a little bit off what you said, and then uh, we'll move on. If the, or you can go whichever direction you want. The crowd's more. The crowd is like your cheat sheet when when you're doing. Everybody always thinks in their mind what I'm doing is the right thing to do, and when you don't have that crowd there to feed off of, it's like okay, this works, this works, this works. But when that crowd's there and you do something in there, yeah, and then you do something like oh, you know, okay, that didn't work. Let's not do that again. So to have that cheat sheet there and to be able to feed off that crowd. It's, it's got to be an incredible asset. I know as a ring announcer, it's a very big asset for me. And I can only imagine what it's like for them. Yeah, you know what? As a, as a well-known internet Cena lover that I am, um, this will always be my argument. He's one of the few people that will get a reaction out of everybody right Absolutely. if if you if you there's very few people like that right like you you think back of um austin's a special example because everybody cheered for austin uh, mm -hmm. but you think of like the rock there wasn't anyone quiet when the rock was out. it was either let's go rocky rocky sucks right yeah. or when he was rocky my via die rocky die he was always getting a reaction right um yeah. same with cena right like when people always say that cena should have gone heel cena was the biggest heel of the 2000s people just don't know it there name yeah. me a wrestling su a superstar that got more booze and more chance to get out of the building than john cena throughout the 2000s cena was the biggest heel of the 2000s and it was the crowd that made him that i always make the argument that because he wasn't a heel it made him a heel because the crowd wants you to go heel. The crowd wants you to do this. Heels are the people who don't do what the crowd wants them to do. Stina wasn't going heel. So by not going heel, you're denying them what they want. Kind of makes you a heel. That was always my argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? We, I can go. We can literally do an hour and a half podcast on Cena going heel or not going heel. So we may, we won't necessarily go there. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Clash of the Castle. And um, um, I... I I'll lob this one up for you. Uh, one, what was your favorite match? And two, what was your favorite moment? So my favorite match um, is kind of a... It, I'm going to give the slight edge to Matt Riddle and Seth because of the build they had, mm -hmm. because of everything that went into that match. But I can't not acknowledge that Gunther and Sheamus had a fantastic match. So both of those, I give the slight edge to Riddle and Seth just because of the story they told. As far as my favorite moment, Santi, it's one that you called during our prediction show. I loved seeing the complete Imperium. Yes. That, that I mean, instant goosebumps up and down my arm. I instantly thought WWE's tag division just got a lot better. Um, there's another viable tag team uh, that could give the Usos a run and make great matches that we haven't seen before. Uh, so seeing the third member of Imperium return, um, I don't know what his name is now because I was kind of marking out, um, but formerly known as Marcel Bartel is back. Um, so uh, that was probably my favorite moment of the show. Aside from Drew McIntyre's old song. Really? So um, I'm one of those people that, that just that isn't into Drew McIntyre's old song. I, I, I know I'm in a minority. <laughs> I know I'm in a minority. I love it as a I love it as a song in general. I think it's a great song. I love the band Shaman's Harvest. And you know, you brought up this very interesting point about, you know, showing the wrestler's past. And I thought playing that kind of brought yes. everything full circle to where he was. And it I love the song, but I feel like the song played a key point in a bigger picture.
I agree. I agree. It was that full circle of, hey, we are acknowledging the journey that was Drew McIntyre. We know that he he wasn't always this death machine carrying around the sword, always in the main yeah. event. There was there were struggles, and those struggles have finally come to crescendo here um, at uh, Clash of the Castle and arguably his biggest match of all time. Um, I'm mm-hmm. not even going to say arguably. I would say even the match against Brock Lesnar because there was no audience. This was Drew McIntyre's biggest match of all time in my personal opinion uh, but yeah but for me um I, i'm with you the the unification of imperium was my gatorade hype moment 2022 as i like to call them um i got hype and it was partly hype because one i love being right uh because it was one of those checklists like oh i would love to see this and for them to actually do it and pull the trigger it was just one of those things that made sense right it didn't yes. make sense that they broke up imperium uh and triple h is undoing a lot of those things that didn't make sense uh and we'll talk a little bit about those during the um during the topic of the show and my favorite match i do have to give it to uh gunther um versus versus sheamus it was just it's it, just yeah. men slapping each other yeah it, it, it was it was vibes of like north american sports entertainment you and european old school wrestling and japanese strong style it was just it was just something that I haven't seen personally, like, yes, of course, you've seen it with um, Walter versus Ilya Dragunov, a better, a better match, a better match than than, Walt, than Gunther Sheamus, uh, but we haven't seen it at this stage. This type of match in yeah. WWE has not been seen before, I don't think. We've seen it in NXT, yes, but I don't think we've seen it at this wider audience yet, and I think this speaks volumes to the trust that they have for the likes of Gunther, of course, and Sheamus mm-hmm. as that veteran to help guide Gunther through his his biggest match of his career absolutely yeah um, it, you, just like you said it, it it gave me very much similar vibes of a very close snug strong style type match a, an old match that would stand the test of time against the likes of harley race and guys like that but still had that sprinkle of sports entertainment to top it off it, it was very very entertaining the show as a whole was very very entertaining and i loved every second of it yeah, before we move on to topic of the show, let's talk about um, that main event because there is a couple of things. You know, you and I were going back and forth about a a an involvement from um, from a town downtown. Uh, I don't know if they've given him his first name back yet, Austin Theory. Yeah. They have. Okay, okay. Um, we, we joke about it on Monday. He said, "You found your first name again." <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, we had the involve the. I, I guess the right word isn't the debut, uh, the the main roster call up of of Solo Sokoa, and then what I called in my live stream as I said, you know what, this is a potential to potentially ruin this main event, the involvement of Tyson Fury. Um, and I'll go first here. I love the main event. I, if you recall in the in in the predictions video, I said I wanted Drew McIntyre to win. They are setting up Drew McIntyre to win, and then I turned it around. I I turned heel at the very end, and I said. But I still think Roman Reigns wins. I I had a feeling WWE is still not comfortable taking the titles off of Roman Reigns. They 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 feel like they still have something uh, lightning in a bottle that they don't want to unleash just yet. And and I'm I'm okay with it. Um, I almost wish that this event wasn't in Cardiff and it wasn't Drew McIntyre because I do think that McIntyre this was the perfect place and the perfect venue for him to finally win the big one. It's mm-hmm. just, I almost don't feel mm-hmm. like it was fair to him to put him against Roman Reigns because it, I still don't think it was the right time to take the titles off of Roman. I think it was the right call. It's just a shame that it was at the expense of Drew McIntyre in front of that hot crowd. No, I completely agree. And um, I tend not to entertain the dirt sheets and the rumors because there's so many of them. Um, but there was one that I seen where uh, apparently there was a conversation between Triple H and Vince when Triple H did step into that creative role where he gave, where he made Vince the promise that he wouldn't remove the titles from Roman until after WrestleMania. How true that is, I don't know. But like you said, if it was going to come off Roman, the stars were in perfect line for this one. Like everything was perfect for this one. Um, but. I am so angry at Tyson Fury. He ruined my he ruined my uh my prediction. 
and I thought it was going to happen. I heard his music, and then Tyson Fury had to get involved. Yeah, I, I think it would have been better had they let him cash. I think they should have. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was not a big fan. And it, you know what? Like, okay, main event was good. There were some things that we weren't particularly huge fans of. Mm-hmm. Um, let's move on to, let's talk about Tyson Fury. Um, I was cringing and very uncomfortable and did not enjoy the ending sequence with the singing. This is this is perfect stuff to do when, when things go off the air. Send the crowd yes. home happy, you know, do the goofy song and dance wrestling. This happens for those that haven't been to a house show. This shit happens at house shows all the time. Um, not necessarily time. singing, but like silly, goofy stuff that you wouldn't necessarily see on TV. Um, this is silly, goofy shit that shouldn't have happened on TV. I'm like, all right, guys, we just had... Um, potentially the most heart-stopping match um with the biggest stakes since the start of the pandemic Mm -hmm. and and it should have ended at the very least the broadcast should have ended with a rousing ovation for drew mcintyre as he got up as the defeated warrior instead the lasting image that we had was that giant goon Tyson Fury singing Sweet Caroline or whatever the hell it was. Um, no, it was he. It was something else that he said. And, and look, I get. I'm a boxing fan, and there were a lot of people in the live stream being like, "Well, clearly you don't watch boxing." He does this after every match. Fuckers, I know, I know, but like, it's it's not. That's not the point. I I understand that it's to character to Tyson Fury, but Tyson Fury is not a part of weekly programming. He should not be the one closing the show for us. He should not be sharing the spotlight with the one guy who just went to war and had the the longest reigning universal champion pinned that should have been a rousing standing ovation for drew mcintyre cut to black live stream ends then you do the goofy shenanigans to send the crowd home happy that's my opinion i did not like the way that they ended the show and ended the broadcast yeah i um i spoke to uh lana who is a tiktoker from ireland she was actually there with steve I was on one of her lives today and um, she had made the comment that that's exactly what it felt like in the arenas. When he got in and started singing, everybody kind of looked at each other like, uh, um, and then people started joining in. So I I completely agree. I I said it when I was live on Twitch that why is this happening? What's going on? I will admit when I found out what song he was singing, I kind of was like, okay, they're in the UK. This is the Beatles. It is what it is. And I kind of bought into it a little bit. But in the beginning, it was very, very cringy, to say the least. Um, I don't think, I mean, you said it best. I don't think in that moment, Drew McIntyre needed to share the spotlight with anybody. If there was any time for him to be selfish, it was that moment and drink it in and take everything for what it has. Because if, 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 if history or if the future is anything like the history was, He's not going to have that shot for another 30 years. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, I, again, I think at that point, I, I'm just being, um, um, I myself am probably being a cringy wrestling fan. Like, you know, like I want it this way. Why can't I have it that way? Um, but you know, um, that's, that's what happens when you give a wrestling fan a mic, right? Yeah. You, 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 you give them a platform to, to, to voice their displeasures and I'm going to voice my displeasures. And that was one of them, but hell, that was still, you know, that was still a, a, a A plus show. It was fantastic from start to finish. I love the fact that uh, no match was under 10 minutes, Kevin. Everyone yeah. got a chance to work from the tag teams um, in the pre-show all the way to to the multi-women matches, to the singles matches. Everyone when's got a chance to shine. A that good. Not trying to cut you off. When's the last time we had a pre-show that good? Exactly. That pre-show really set the pace. And I was like, guys, we know you're used to seeing a certain product. Shit's about to change. Yeah, yeah. The 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 show just felt different from a lot of WWE pay per views. Um, it, it was like they they left the the entertainment aspect of sports entertainment to the showmanship and the production, the staging, mm. the pyro, all that stuff. Um, and, and it wasn't, you know, zombies around the ring for a lumberjack match. It wasn't silly promos. Uh, it wasn't the new day with water guns. It was, Hey, 
You paid to watch these guys and gals go at it for the next four hours. That is what we are going to give you. Um, and, uh, you know, I... I I don't I, I don't think that the show necessarily could have been better. I think that it was it was as good as it possibly could have been at this point. Um, and you know what? That seems to be a common trope right now. We're going to transition into the topic of the show. Kevin, I don't know if you've noticed yet, but I am a master of transitions. And this is another example. The Clash at the Castle was so good. SummerSlam was so good. Monday Night Raws are getting great reviews from everyone. Friday Night Smackdowns are getting great title defenses from the likes of Gunther, it feels different than it did just as recently as a month and a half ago. It feels like if you look back at the WWE at the beginning of the year, I I'm going to give them a pass through the through the Thunderdome era because I think every wrestling company was kind of in a bit of the doldrums throughout that. Yeah, just figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, growing pains, you give them the pass. You know, they were giving mm -hmm. us the entertainment in a time where it was really hard to enter <laughs> to be able to provide entertainment. But since fans started returning back, the sentiment around the WWE seemed very dire. You know, people were yes. still getting released left, right, and center. Um, talent seemed to be very um, uh, lethargic with their bookings, very um, non, they're, they're in there to do the job that they're supposed to do. It almost seemed like a lot of the, the guys and girls there weren't loving the job that they were doing as they used to before. Going through the motions. Going through the motions, thank you. Um, <laughs> and not only... Do I think that it was felt internally by the talent? It was definitely felt by the fans. Now, internet wrestling fans are toxic as hell. They can be absolutely. There's, I love wrestle talk. It seems to be one of the more wholesome areas of the wrestling internet community. There's some really great personalities on there, but for the most part, the internet wrestling community are vocal, whiny little babies. And we let the world know that we were not happy with the WWE. We were upset. We felt the booking was boring. We felt the booking was lame. There were never any payoffs to storylines. Uh, they were changing things that made no sense to change Walter to Gunther, Austin Theory to Theory, Tomas. So Champa the Champa, just things where it was just leaving wrestling fans dumbfounded to the point where a lot of those WWE fans turned their eyes to the cool new kid in town, AEW. And for a moment in time, AEW could do nothing wrong. Everything mm -hmm. they were doing was banger after banger after banger. Debuts left, right, and center. Uh, they were the buzz of the wrestling town. And it seems, Kevin, and this is our topic of the show, that the tides have turned. The fortunes have flipped upside down. And it seems like now the, 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 the cool kid on the block is back to being the WWE. And AEW, although I'm, in my opinion, are still producing a wonderful product, now isn't this shiny, wonderful new toy for wrestling fans. And now a, a lot of the focus isn't just on their, their great booking and great work. It's now on their backstage politics. So now we've got like this upside down flip where the WWE can do no wrong. And AEW, everyone fucking hates CM Punk, Tony Khan. What the fuck are the Young Bucks doing? What is going on here? Too much talent. The roster's too bloated. All these complaints that weren't there a year ago from fans now all of a sudden are surfacing. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's break this down because I've gone here on a little bit of a tangent setting up our, <laughs> setting up our topic here. Um, Kevin, if, if you had to go back in time. And mm -hmm. you were to tell your one one year ago self the current state of the wrestling business. Do you think that one year ago Kevin heel Kevin would believe you? I don't think so. Especially if 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 one one year if we're just talking simply one year, not five years, talking one year. If you would have told me that uh, the Wall Street Journal was going to get Vince McMahon out of wrestling, I wouldn't have believed you for a second. Um, and I wouldn't think that WWE would be as entertaining as it is. Um, so absolutely not. Um, I don't think I would have believed it. I think I would have had, I think I would have had a lot of questions. It would have been like that movie, the movie scene where it's like, prove you're really me. Tell <laughs> me a story from third grade that's really embarrassing that only I know and have never told. Prove to me you're me. And then even then, I still would have, I, I still would have interrogated it. Uh, to no end. Um, but in short answer, 
no, I probably wouldn't have believed it. Yeah, and we're going to dive into things uh, a little bit deeper. Um, the first question that I have for you, Kevin, this stuff that's going on with CM Punk, um, for those that are listening and you're not up to date, quick synopsis um after all out cm punk did in my opinion a very unprofessional if it wasn't to work a very unprofessional press conference where he went off on cold cabana um in my opinion belittled tony khan without necessarily belittling him you know he wasn't outright saying tony khan sucks but he was saying things like i'm trying to build a company here with tony khan the guy who's literal job is to build a company right next to him um belittling the 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 talent executives and the young bucks and kenny omega which eventually led allegedly to fisticuffs a brawl in the back um that involved shares being thrown um potential injuries um building staff thinking that they need to call the police like it was serious Uh, yes first and foremost kevin is this a work or is this not a work I don't think it's a work. I don't think not it's a work either. Bit. Um, now, you you um, have not been able to see tonight's episode of Dynamite. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, this is recorded right after uh, Dynamite. I was able to watch it. Um, and for... If you haven't... Like Santi said, I also believe it was very unprofessional. Uh, CM Punk started the interview um, unprovoked about Colt Cabana. Um, just immediately started talking about Colt Cabana, talked about Colt's mother, uh, talked about Colt, called Adam Hangman Page an empty, uh, dumb, empty-headed other words, um, talked about the EVPs not being fit to manage a target, um, and kind of made it all about him and continued to down-talk all of them. And what really stood out to me, Santi, is that, um, did you watch the, the media scrum? I did, yes. Okay, so what really stood out to me was Tony Khan had numerous times where he could have put a stop to this. As soon as it started, hey, we're going to talk about the show. We're going to talk about All Out. We're going to talk about the future of the championship and stuff like that. He didn't do that. Um, Aside from that, what he did do was he nodded in agreement and he added to CM Punk's rant. Therefore, to me, that tells me he endorses everything this man is doing. And if I'm a younger talent within AEW, a guy like, Ricky Starks, a guy like Hook, maybe um, a private party or, or somewhere around there. I'm like, wow, mm-hmm. if, if Tony Khan's going to let CM Punk talk like this about the EVPs, what's he going to let him do to me? Like, what is he going to let him say about me? So I thought it was very unprofessional. I think Tony had plenty of time to stop it and he didn't do it. And it, you know, you, the old saying down here in the South, your chickens come home to roost. And he's roosting a lot of eggs right now. Uh, Punk would then leave uh, the commentary table um, and then go back to his locker room where his dog and Ace Steel's wife was. The Young Bucks apparently barged into the locker room. CM Punk struck Matt. Ace Steel hit Nick with a chair and then bit the face of Kenny Omega. Um, and it led to like this big all-out brawl. Now, all of this could be a work. Um, but what tells me it's not is one, using Colt Cabana's real name and bringing his mother into it. Two people that are very well documented that they don't like each other. They haven't spoken in 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 years, close to a decade, if you believe what CM Punk says. Um, I don't think that they would have been on the same page to work something together because where's the payoff between him and Colt? They don't want to work together. They don't want to wrestle each other. Where's the payoff at? There's, in my opinion, there's not one. And then you fast forward to tonight's Dynamite. Both the trio's titles, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, and the AEW world title were stripped. Both all champions involved were stripped of their titles. We have new uh, new um, trios tag champions. There is a current tournament going on right now to crown a new AEW champion. Um, and so, yeah, for the reasons of the stripped champions and the involvement of just how cringy it was, I, I don't feel like it was a work. Yeah, it, honestly, everything about this is uncomfortable. Um, you know, like you know, you hear even in the in in the worst of days in the WWE, this didn't happen, right? A a talent. Um, I don't I don't want to use the term going to business for himself because that almost sounds like a wrestling term that could be a work. Um, but like 
outright insubordinate of the entire organization and and burying the organization i I don't think i've personally seen that on live wwe television or anything um wwe related um this this was new territory for me and i did not Mm -hmm. enjoy it i you know like i think they're oh that's cm punk with a pipe bomb No, no 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 we can't encourage this type of shit by calling it a pipe bomb we can't we can't be happy that you know oh you know what really sticking it to the man no this this is a bitter man this is a bitter man that aired grievances that should not have been aired to fans and to reporters Mm -hmm. absolutely in no there this is not welcomed in any way shape or form to the point where i'm going to say this kevin in the one percent chance that this is a work i fucking hate it i still don't like it i still don't like it very distasteful um yeah i i believe that i understand that fans nowadays to in in myself included i want to be that that percentage of fans that really wants to be surprised i I understand that the internet is a thing. I understand that the Twitter machine is a thing and stuff gets leaked. Uh, my good friend AJ uh, went back to WWE and it was supposed to be this big surprise to end up getting leaked. I understand this happens all the time. I am in the majority of fans that want to be surprised. Um, so for that reason, I believe there are certain things that need to happen behind the scenes. Things that need to happen. Like I said, as soon as it started to come up with Colt Cabana and get off the rails, and stuff like that, because keep in mind, Colt Cabana is still a man who works for Tony Khan. Yep, Ring he's on the brand. Um, but his boss is still Tony Khan. Dang, boss, how are you gonna let him do that to me? How are you gonna let him talk about my mom? Like, like, what's going on here? That's gonna cause a lot of friction, as we clearly seen. Um, and it's like I was telling people the other day. I was like, if you think that this is okay, I was, and I was talking to a group of people, and I was like, raise your hand if you've ever been fired from a job. I'm in that group of people. Now, did your boss come out and say that on the floor in front of all the employees? Or did he say, hey, I need to see you in the office really quick. Step in here. Maybe there's a witness in there, um, which there, there should be. But it's done in private is my point. Yeah, These things like this should be done in private. They should have been handled a different way. I will say that, you know, after everything that didn't have to happen happened it is good to see that there is some uniformity between the punishments or reprimands whatever you want to call them um so that's pretty cool that's that's a good sign um that nobody is above the rules and if you don't mind i'll go ahead and say i i said this when it started when, when all this came out i was like tony khan's got to do something that is going to let everybody know this is unacceptable i understand this is a combat sport but you cannot have people legitimately trying to fight each other. And there has to be something done to where everybody else says, okay, that I don't want to do this because that punishment they got was, was, was outrageous. Hmm. And it was good to see that it happened to the EVPs and punk because now it gives that precedence that nobody is above the rules. And, and you know what, that's, uh, that's an excellent point that I was about to bring up because um, as somebody, uh, 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 myself, I've had the uh, the unfortunate pleasure to be in positions where I've been the one firing people. I've had yes. those conversations, which means I've also had to deal with potential um, labor disputes where, you know, people didn't agree with the firing, blah, blah, blah. They file stuff to the um, grievances that, you know, you then uh, have to deal with. I don't know how it works in Florida and contracting contractor workers because they are contractors. They aren't employees of AEW or Ring of Honor. I'm assuming because that's how WWE does it. I'm assuming that that's how AEW contracts are, where they are contractors, not full time salaried employees. Um, That being said, you know, in a normal world, in normal corporate America, normal corporate Canada, Cole Cabana has case to say and sue and say that he is now part of a hostile work environment. Absolutely. Yes. 100%. He was blasted on live television during work hours. <laughs> that It's exactly what it is where he can now say that he is now part of a hostile work environment. And again, the right steps need to be taken in order to show the Colt Cabana, hey, we are taking the right steps to ensure that shit like this never happens again. And I do believe that, you know, for all the crap Tony Khan gets on the internet, this was the right move um, in order to demonstrate to the AEW locker room, I'm still in charge. It, it 
if because for the last little bit, Kevin, and, and this was a, a quote from from Steve. So I don't want to. Uh, he he's the king of whining of like you stole that from me. Steve, you said this. So if you're listening to this, Steve said this is what happens when you let the inmates run the asylum, right? Sure. This is what happens when you let the inmates run the asylum. So I like that Tony Khan stepped up, provided punishments to let the roster know and remember this isn't being run by the inmates. This is not an asylum. This is a wrestling company and I'm the CEO of this place and I'm going to put my foot down to ensure shit like this doesn't happen again or at the very least discourage it. I think it starts with, you know, your EVPs can't be in-ring talent. I think there's a very fine line there that has to separate the two. Um, personally, we don't know everything that's come out about the punishment, but personally, what we do know, I feel is too light. Um, I'm the type of person, and I, I know I'll probably get some heat for this. I'm the type of person that when something like this happens, this is the first time it's happened, there needs to be such an outrageous and over-the-top punishment that nobody ever wants to come close to this line again. Somebody asked me today, Kevin, well, what would you have done? And honestly, for me, if I were in that position, I had to make the decision. This is what I said I would do. Number one, everybody is suspended pending an investigation. The investigation is going to reveal who, who started the altercation. That person's automatically fired. Whoever started it, that's fired. Everybody else is suspended. All champions stripped. Um, you cannot compete for a championship within the next 12 months. When you come back from your suspension, you owe the entire locker room an apology. And everybody that was involved, 10% of your wages for the year are now going towards fines. Because I understand Brandon Cutler doesn't make the same as CM Punk. I understand that everybody's on different pay scales. So 10% across the board, 15% across the board, you're all getting fined, you're all getting suspended, you're all getting stripped. You have to set that in, like you said, because then it shows good faith to the roster, right? If you do things like this, if you decide, oh, I've got an open microphone, I can say what I want, eh, you could try. Look what happened to the other ones. You have to set that clear line that this is not going to be tolerated. And I think Tony is working the steps toward that. And I will say that I think Tony, for all the crap he gets, I think Tony tonight on Dynamite really took lemons and turned it into lemonade because the show was really, really, really good. Let's face it. Everybody and their mother was going to tune into Dynamite tonight to see what would be said to see if it would get addressed, to see if Tony was going to say something, to see if they're going to be stripped, whatever the case may be. Um, because when the original report came out, CM Punk and A Steel, they were undecided whether they were going to be fired or suspended. So everybody wanted those answers. Now you're going to have eyes on the product that haven't watched it in a long time or have never watched it. Let's give them something to watch. Let's make, excuse me, let's make it a good show. They're here for this, but let's give them a reason to stay. And tonight's card, there was one match that kind of bored me a little bit, but from top to bottom, uh, with the exception of that one match, fantastic show. And he gave everybody what they wanted. MJF was back, and they gave him an open mic, and he had the first 20 minutes of dynamite. What, what I will say, you know, I've seen some people in certain uh, wrestling circles uh, make the comment, oh, well, what's AEW is becoming like WCW. This is what happens, you know, when when the in-ring talent has too much say. I, I think that's a that's a genuine um, far stretch. It, I mean, the yeah. b regardless of what's going on in terms of the backstage politics and the, and the drama, um, the booking of AEW has been stellar. Like that, that, that hasn't changed. Like the matches have been fantastic. Um, the, the, the revival of ring of honor has been great. The, 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 you know, like the, the, the trios tournament was awesome. Giving us fantastic matches like death triangle versus United empire. Like there is no denying the in-ring talent of AEW. Like ha it's not like it's gone downhill. It's not as if like, um, it, it's, it's gotten bored and stale like the wwe got for a little while there towards the end of the vince mcmahon era um it's just this it's almost like this aura of negativity that wasn't there before right yeah. and this aura of negativity i hate to say this because i love the guy in the wwe it started when they signed punk like yeah. almost right off the get-go Everything was peaches and cream in AEW before the signing of CM Punk. Yes, the giant nostalgic pops. People love the fact that CM Punk was back. I saw some people fucking crying. 
I don't get why you cry over CM Punk. I don't think he's the he's the end all be all, but I get it. You know, you're a passionate wrestling fan. It was like two weeks after Punk returned that then things started to get a little bit sour. You know, that 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 Punk isn't all, all these reports that were never there. Like if you if you follow wrestling on YouTube, like Wrestle Talk, um, Cultaholic, all these things, all of the negative thumbnails that they always use was always about WWE talent being unhappy. It wasn't mm. until Punk joined <clears throat> AEW that the news machine started to turn towards bringing the de- the negativity towards the AEW roster. The AEW roster isn't happy about this, not happy about that. Um, making reports about like FDR not being happy that they're excluded from the video, the AEW video game. This, I, I, I mean, yeah, I'm sure they have Rare's release. Yeah, I'm sure they're these are. Legitimate reasons for the talent to be upset about, but these are things that were, at the very least, in my opinion, before CM Punk, all this stuff was being handled privately, how it should have been. Mm -hmm. It wasn't out in the air for people to create gossip and make assumptions about this, this tide of negativity came with CM Punk. Yeah, 100%. And I'm a, I'm a little bit of a conspiracy guy. I'm a little bit of a, um... I like to fantasy think here, and I'm, I'm going to throw something out to you that kind of hit me uh, this week. And I'm just going to preface this by saying, for anybody watching, this is a what-if scenario, and I want to pitch this to Santi. Um, you know, when Cody Rhodes left and went back to WWE, he got a lot of flack. He's mad that he lost his booking authority. He's being a crybaby. He doesn't like the way he's being treated. What if? All this stuff that we have coming to light now, what if Cody saw the writing on the walls or it was happening backstage and he decided, uh, I'm I'm getting out of the fire before I get burned alive? Because I'm telling you right now, out of all the EVPs of AEW's history, there's one living his best life right now, and that's Cody Rhodes. A hundred percent. I think you're hitting it on the head here, whether it's a conspiracy theory or not. Um, what What is he? I'm not trying to cut you off. What did he say in his first promo? You guys might think it was a hard decision to come back to WWE. It was not. Mm-hmm. Here, here's the thing: like you know, <clears> when you when you talk, it, it, Steve all, it always points out. You know, you always relate things to, to business. It's true though. Business is a is a great allegory for how how the world runs. If you are a founder of a company, you don't leave unless there is a reason for you to need to leave. Right, because if you're a founder of a company and you see this skyrocketing and becoming a giant organization, you are going with it. You are riding the wave. You become the billionaire, right? Because you're a founder. You are there from the beginning. For a founder to make the decision to walk away from that opportunity is actually says, and an, not just a thousand words, an entire encyclopedia of words as to what may have been potentially wrong with AEW because no one would know more than one of the founding members of AEW in Cody Rhodes for him to go back knowing he was going to get flack from fans, knowing he was going to get flack from AEW fans, knowing that people were going to paint a picture as to why he was leaving for him to still pull the trigger and decide to leave something that he created that he, that could have potentially set him for the rest of his life had he mm-hmm. stuck with it and had it con- like grown to wor- wor- other worldly status like it, it's not crazy to assume that one of the founders like cody rhodes could end up potentially being a billionaire it, like again i'm just I'm, I'm saying you know aw 10 15 years from now maybe becoming I mean, the business ventures he was able to do while there. not to mention cody's been very open about this one of his favorite things to do is work the indie scene, go to Japan, Mm. go do something for NWA, maybe pop up over here. He gave all that up. He gave all that up to be WWE exclusive again, knowing all the flack it was going to come with, knowing with all the heat it was going to come with. And he stood strong in his convictions. He, He went on television. He told you, hey, this is what it is. My question is, and I got to ask the question, what if he knew something we didn't know? I don't think it's cra- yeah. for that. I don't think it's a crazy question. Um, 
I, I, you know, like no one is going to see the writing on the wall better than somebody who's back there. Right. And, and yeah. you know, Cody Rhodes saw what he saw, made the decision that he made. And like you said, you know, like he's the one over here feasting, having the best run of his career while injured. He's not even, he's not even on TV and, and people are clamoring for more Cody Rhodes. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think that, 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 that it's, um, that it, it's too wild of a conspiracy theory, but you know, we're going to transition here to talk a little bit about the the WWE now um but I want to clarify like we aren't shitting on AEW for the sake of shitting I want to clarify the product is AEW. still phenomenal the product is great I it still has as a, an ungodly treasure it's chest of talent AEW figure around the roof of my office yeah. I love AEW we, we're just we're addressing the elephants in the room I am a fan of wrestling in general. Um, so, no, I, I agree with Santi. We're not shitting on it just to shit on it. We, we're talking about things that the entire wrestling community is talking about and giving our thoughts and opinions on it. But just to be clear, I love WWE. I love AEW. I love wrestling. Yeah, and you know what? At the end <clears throat> of the day, this just may be the growing pains of a... At at the end of the day, this is a startup. This is a startup company. A startup has growing pains, whether you are a startup tech company, a startup mom and pop gym, a startup wrestling company, you're going to have growing pains. And this may just be their big hurdle as they move to the next step of growing a wrestling organization. We This what? might just be water under the bridge within a couple of weeks and may not even be a worthy talking point anymore. And I hope that's what it ends up becoming. Absolutely. But, you know, going back to something you said in the beginning of the show, just to add my little, my last touch on this topic before we switch, um, everybody's always said, Tony Khan needs to be more of an owner. He needs to be more of a boss. He needs to be in more control. He just stripped his world champion and his three EVPs of their titles to show people, this is who I am and rules will be followed. So. Like you said, maybe this was the growing pain he needed to see, okay, I've been a little bit too chillaxed lately. Let's, 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 every step forward now, we're going to make sure there's a clear line and here's where it's at. Yeah. And uh, one last thing here. Uh, first of all, CM Punk as a former manager at a Target. Fuck you. It's very difficult to run a Target, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts, you motherfucker. All right, I don't want to hear that. I don't want Target to be used as the as the lowest common denominator. <laughs> oh, I just you got a that was a genuine pop. I had no idea you worked at a Target. That was a genuine pop. Oh man, yeah, it was a lifetime ago, but it, you know that oh, one still oh, hit home. God. That one still hit home, punk. That um, was. So. <laughs> WWE. All right. So, um, you know, we talked about how AEW was the darling of the wrestling community. They yes. could do nothing wrong. Their shit smelled <laughs> beautiful, right? Anything that they did was a five star match, Kevin. You know, Pac breathes on Kenny Omega. Oh my God, it's a 7.25 match on Wrestling Observer. That's how good AEW was. WWE, opposite, right? Like they were, they were. I would say pre uh, let's call it let's talk after this year's mania let's not go too far back um i would say that one of the few highlights of the wrestlemania and beyond was just cody rhodes versus seth rollins i don't think that there was much to be excited about within the wwe aside from cody rhodes and seth rollins yeah rk bro was doing some fun stuff um the usos the uh, the the bloodline as a whole but for the most part wrestling wwe fans um wanted more they were tired they did not like some of the changes that um old man vince mcmahon was doing I, you know i've already mentioned a couple of these uh tomaso champa to champa why are we that dumb do you not think that we can remember two fucking names since um austin theory to theory um Go walter to goon Th just things that didn't make any sense that just were little nitpicks and gripes that just kept piling up and piling up and piling up to the point where people were just fucking sick and tired of the wwe um and then 
the bomb was dropped. The Vince Mc, the uh, a Vince McMahon sized nuclear bomb was dropped on the point six million dollar bomb. Yeah, on not just the WWE, really the wrestling world. This is probably <laughs> the biggest thing that's happened in professional wrestling since I've been a fan. The dismissal, we don't call it dismissal, but more pretty. Let's face it, it pretty much is the dismissal of Vince McMahon, most likely decided by the board of directors um, and, and shareholders of the WWE. The removal of Vince McMahon as the CEO. Um, a lot of people, myself included, were excited about this. I was excited about this because it meant change. It meant something different, but I was also scared. You know, like the WWE has been a ship that's been running on the back of Vince McMahon for the better part of like 50 years. All right. Yeah. This, we are in uncharted waters and uncharted territory. I'm scared Mm -hmm. and I'm excited. And Mm -hmm. I'm happy to say that that excitedness ended up getting paid off with some of the most exciting times in the WWE. WWE is now the kid in town that can do no wrong. Everybody is getting TV time, quality TV time too. Storylines are getting payoffs. Things that were silly in the Vince McMahon era are getting reversed and getting put back into into course. SummerSlam was fantastic. Clash at the Castle was fantastic. Even though Roman Reigns isn't going to be at Extreme Rules, I'm pumped for whatever the hell they're going to do at Extreme Rules. To it, the NXT show was awesome. Yeah, Kevin and. I have not been excited for an Extreme Rules since it was actually Extreme Rules with, you know, uh, Extreme Rules, yeah. ECW, that one night stand, whatever, um, because Extreme Rules has been a joke. It's been silly. It's been mostly silly gimmick wrestling, an eye for mm-hmm. an eye match or the 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 bog match between um, Wyatt and, and Braun Strowman. Yeah. I think it's possible that we get a proper Extreme Rules, Extreme matches under Triple H. And somebody bleeds. Hey, you know what? It's funny. I'm just doing this out there. Ah, the thing is, it's funny because, like, if if somebody bleeds in the WWE, it's like, hold up, stop the presses. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened, and it happens on AEW every other match. So you're like, ah, you know, John oh, John Moxley bleeding five pints of blood. What else is new, right? So yeah. like, it's just funny to 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 think of like that difference between the two. But um. Let, to, to get back on, on course here, you know, um, we've got complete reversals here, Kevin. We no, have 100%, got 100% was, reversals. When, when you told me the topic of the show, it really made me look back because there were two stats that I had written down. Because um, we discussed this stuff a lot. Um, and there were two things that I wanted to keep track of and, and see if you noticed or, or see if you can recall. Um, the first of which is one of the final episodes of Raw before the Wall Street Journal decided to turn wrestling on its head. Um, I actually recorded, I had a stopwatch here with me, and I recorded how much time in a three-hour episode of Raw is actually spent wrestling. I'm not talking backstage vignettes. I'm not talking commercials. I'm not talking plugs to other stuff. I'm talking bell-to-bell wrestling in three hours, Santee. It was 16 and a half minutes. Wow. 16 and a half minutes. On top of that, we all remember the Queen of the Ring tournament. It would crown Queen Zelina Vega. I timed every single one of those matches from start to final when when Zelina, when the final bell rang and Zelina won. That entire tournament, every round of the tournament was less time than two Roman Reigns entrances. Wow. The, oh, series listening to me. <laughs> um, the entire tournament, man. The entire tournament. That th- Now, that's just from bell to bell. That doesn't count entrances or anything like that. Um, but that is, that is very sad to say. You, you say you want to focus on women's wrestling. You want to bring women's wrestling to the forefront. You have this amazing opportunity, and this happens. Now, we transition over here to... Um, uh, Clash of the Castle, as you pointed out, no match was less than 10 minutes. Every match made sense. It was structured well. It fit. It was awesome. I watched Raw this past week, and the first two hours, gone. It was structured. The matches made sense. Everything had a purpose. It was like the old lesson we learned when we were kids, right? And we're learning to clean our rooms. Everything has a place, and everything's in its place. 
or there's a place for everything and everything's in its place. And that's kind of how it feels right now. It feels like a well oiled machine that we all knew WWE could be. It just wasn't being utilized right. And I absolutely love it. And one thing that I'm really excited about what got me excited about world or not world's Clyde, but extreme rules. I'm going to see if you caught this when they did the promo for extreme rules, who was narrating it? Paul Heyman. Out of anybody in the company that you could have got to film that or just the basic narrator voice that they usually use. No, they had Paul Heyman doing the doing the narration for the Extreme Rules package. Got me fired up. Yeah. When I say fired up, I was fired up. Yeah, that's why I said I was like, hey, maybe we're getting something like Extreme Rules, like, you know, like one night stand days with, with you know, the and it's in Philly, right? And it's in Philly mm -hmm. as well. It, it is in Philly, right? Mm -hmm. Am I is that Mandela? Am I, am I Mandela affecting myself? That it is. If, if you could just double check that while I talk here, I'm pretty sure that that it's in Philly. Um, either way, what's interesting here in terms of the difference between AEW and, and WWE is that I think it's fair to say that we diagnosed that the problem with WWE was purely bad booking. I think we yes. can we can we can now, now that you know we have a a healed patient. You know, they've gotten the right antibiotics. They're healed. We're now able to pinpoint what was wrong with said patient. It was bad booking because what I will say, uh, unlike what's been going on with AEW, and again, this could be because AEW is a young company and doesn't have the PR monstrous machine that the WWE has. Uh, when it comes to backstage drama and politics or disgruntled talent, it doesn't really come out to the forefront into the masses unless it's dirt sheets unless it's it's reporters in the back saying like um x superstar isn't happy with their or you know x superstar got into an into a into an argument it's all hearsay it's all yeah. hey this person is re potentially reporting this that this potentially may have happened wwe has been phenomenal about keeping any sort of this drama under wraps absolutely yes. Um, and again, that could be to the fact that WWE is a fully functioning, publicly traded company with an HR department, talent relations, and a PR team to keep everything under wraps. So with that being said, once AEW figures that shit out. I feel like that's the big thing they're missing is a board of directors, somebody who can keep, because right now there is no, there is no system of checks and balances for Tony Khan. There's not. I feel there's like not a board of directors is really what's lacking and like i said earlier you know uh your management not being in-ring talent just to uh clarify extreme rules will be at the wells fargo center in philadelphia pennsylvania uh, yeah. but i think a board of directors would really go a long way into not only making it look professional but giving that professional feel to it and and really just keeping everybody in line yeah there, there's literally zero reason zero reason why these sort of uh, backstage politics and grievances should be aired to the fans right yes. if there's one thing that in my opinion as a wrestling fan that AEW should be copying from the wwe it it's it's again it, it might be difficult to be able to copy this because of a lack of structure but is structure <laughs> You know, it's, it's kind of weird that I'm saying that, you know, they need to copy structure, but yet they don't have any structure. They need structure. They need something that, like I said, those checks and balances, a proper HR team to keep this shit under wraps. Um, mm -hmm. PR to ensure that, you know, maybe you don't put CM Punk, who is hopped up on adrenaline from being in a match, who has clearly been upset within um, in the company. Maybe you don't put him in front of reporters or maybe you... Here's a fucking brilliant one, Kevin. Maybe you vet what these reporters are going to ask and you make sure that they don't ask anything about Cole Cabana to ensure that CM Punk doesn't get set off. That's the thing. That didn't happen. Oh, I thought the first one, the first original question was asking about Cole Cabana and then the nope. next one wasn't, but yet he brought it back to Cole Cabana. No, 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 no. The, the, the reporter that was standing there CM Punk knew him and he knew he did improv. Oh, yes, said, that's right. Yes. He showed improv and he knew he did improv with Colt Cabana. He was like, oh. who do you do improv with? And he was like, Scott Colt. He was like, are you friends with him? He Punk egged that on. Yes. A hunt, you were right. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. One thing I'll add to your, one thing I'll add to that before I lose it. Um, 
AEW's got to stop taking shots at WWE every single freaking day. I agree. I agree. It's petty. It's it's silly. It's like, okay, you want a microphone in your hand? Here's a checklist. Can you can you speak? Can you articulate? Can you take shots at WWE? Those are their three point checklist when you have a microphone in your hand. And it was cool the first two weeks. It's it's just cringy now. It's cringy now. Now now, um, uh, MJF did it tonight, but he did it in such a genius way. All he did was compliment WWE. He mentioned WWE. He mentioned Triple H. He mentioned all these things. He mentioned Nick Khan. But he complimented them. Yes, it was his smart, arrogant, tactic way of, you know, being MJF. But every when you look at just what he... If I wrote his promo down on a piece of paper and handed it to you, you'd be like, wow, they're really complimenting WWE with all of this. <laughs> now, his tones and his inflections lead you to believe otherwise. But just the verbiage he used, every bit of it was a compliment. Yeah, now... Um... Kevin, as we start to to wind things down here, I want to ask you one more question. This can be, um, you know, how we wrap up this topic. Um, this change of fortunes, where WWE is on top, AEW is 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 feeling. I don't want to say the doldrums because again, there's all there's still there's still more good to AEW than there is bad. It's just that the bad is getting that that spotlight, so it, it, it's it's the it's the um, it's the hot topic within within the wrestling community. Does this last? Does it last for the WWE? Does this last for AEW? Does WWE come back down to earth, if, if, if per se you want to call that? Do these problems in AEW go away? How do they go away? I know I'm asking you like a million questions, um, but I want to hear some of your thoughts. So I think we can, I think this is a scenario where we can have our cake and eat it too. I don't think WWE has to get worse, and I don't think uh, AEW can't get better. Um, What I think needs to happen is right now, Triple H knows what he's doing. He needs to keep doing what he's doing. Tony Khan has got to stop comparing everything they do to WWE. He's got to stop with with this constant. um, I am I am now the the longest reigning CEO of a professional wrestling company and all this other bullshit, man. Like, stop focusing You know, out of everything that everything bad that CM Punk said, he did say one thing that I've said my entire life and I 100 percent agree with. The grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. Stop worrying about the grass on the other side and water the grass you have. You have phenomenal talent. You have amazing, amazing wrestlers on your roster. You have you you've shown that you can do very good storylines. The year build to Omega and Hangman, where Hangman finally got the title, you, you've you shown that you have the ability to do what it takes to be a top-tier wrestling company, but you are so deluded and you are so worn down with, what are they doing? What can we say about them? And even, even in that interview, or even in that press conference, Tony Khan said, and what a, what a, what a childish thing to get upset about. He said, last year, Memorial Day, I was the first wrestling company you saw. And now I'm the third. You know, I, I had a I had a taste of what 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 uh, Jim Crockett felt. Yeah. But I got a lot more money than he did than he did. And um, and, and then he goes to say, I'm not gonna take this sitting down. Take what sitting down? The fact that a wrestling company is running wrestling shows. It's not like they booked a venue right next to you on the same day. Yeah. They yeah. were in Cardiff, <laughs> in, in 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 Florida. You were in Chicago. What are you not going to take sitting down? The fact that they want to put on a good product? If anything, this should inspire you to, okay, we're not going to we're not going to be able to just, you know, piece things together and and be considered the better brand anymore. Now we have to put thought into it. Now we have to build these guys. Now we have to stop putting Alistair Black, Malachi Black on screen once every six months and making him lose to Darby Allen on a pay-per-view because that made total fucking sense. Agreed. Agreed. When, 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 and I'm going to throw this other stat out there. When you think about, or when you look at the stats, the Trust Busters, a pieced together three-man group of Arya Davari, Parker Bordeaux, and some guy whose name I can't remember, have more six-man wins than the entire house, than, than House of Black, Buddy Matthews, Brody King, and, and Malachi Black. That is a problem. That is a huge problem. You have to start. You say wins and losses matter. Let's make them matter. Okay. Stop making people 
stop putting people over just because they're your favorite. Do it because it makes sense. There's no reason Malachi Black takes a clean loss to Darby Allen when he's got the entire House of Black with him. Right now, there's no reason for us to fear the House of Black. There's no reason for them to be intimidating. There's no reason for Lance Archer to be intimidating because he's taken pins from Dustin Rhodes. Why do we fear the Murder Hawk anymore? Why do we fear Miro anymore? We don't. And this is because of the booking you have done. Stop focusing on what everybody else is doing and worry about how you can make your product the best it can possibly be. And then, like I said, if that happens, WWE can stay good, AEW can stay good, and we all win as fans. Kevin, I think uh, on that monologue, I think we're going to end it because I think that's a great way to to end this episode because I think you're 100% right. I don't think I can add anything else to that. Um, so granted. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what I will say is I think um, Malachi Black is at the point where uh, he would willingly say the Velveteen Dream's name. Like that's like he's, his stock is so low right now. His stock is so low right now. But anyways, um, Kevin, let's wrap this up. Where can the people find you, sir? Every single weekday. Twice a day, starting at 8 a.m. in the morning, going to 12 p.m., and then at 7.25 to 11 p.m. Those are my two times I'm live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Kevin. We watch Monday Night Raw, NXT, Dynamite, Rampage, SmackDown, and I do my interview shows on Thursdays, which uh, <clears throat> I would love to get the straight shoot guys on there one night uh, if, if schedules could ever link up, but either way. And, like, and in the morning, we watch old school wrestling, whether it be Old school ECW, NWA, we play video games. So twitch.tv slash is where you can find me twice a day, every weekday, 8 a.m. and then 7.25 p.m. You can also find me at HeelKevin1 on TikTok. We just hit 74,000 followers today. Thank you all for the love and support. Truly appreciate it. You guys will never understand how much I really appreciate each and every one of you. And you too, Santi, for allowing me to be on the show and uh, plugging my my uh, platforms. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think I said it last week, uh, giving Kevin here my uh, wrestling fan seal of approval. Uh, he's definitely one of the cornerstones of the internet wrestling community. I would highly suggest that you follow his uh, socials. All those will be down in the description if you're watching the video here um, on YouTube or uh, it'll be in wherever it is the description is on whatever podcast service it is that you're listening on. We're on so many podcast services that I don't know what they all look like. So if you're listening on Pandora, I don't even know what the fuck that is, but I'm pretty sure we're on Pandora too. So, um, you know, if there's a, uh, a, a, a section where I can put links, it's Kevin's stuff is going to be there. It's just simpler on YouTube and other places description. Uh, that's where that stuff is going to be. Uh, of course, uh, you can follow me over at twitch.tv slash Santi's app, and you can find all of my socials as well in the description, uh, below. Um, but Kevin, thank you once again for, uh, joining me for this episode. We have you next week as well, right? Pleasure. Yes, sir. It's my pleasure, and I look forward to being the sixth time guest on the Straight Shoot Podcast. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you very much for listening. Take care. Be good people. Cheers.